This conference will now be recorded. Today, we are going to discuss various data types available in Python. Various data types available in Python. First one we are going to see array. Second one is string. Third one is list. Fourth one is couple. Couples. Fifth one is we are going to see six. Sixth one we are going to see dictionaries. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah. These are the data types are in Python. We are going to see array, string, list, tuples, sets, and dictionaries. The first thing you are going to see array. Everyone knows array is nothing but a collection of item. Array is nothing but a collection of item. We can store at contiguous memory locations. We can store at contiguous memory locations. Now, I'm going to give some example for you. In the array, I'm going to take three elements. One, two, three. In the array, it's a contiguous memory location. Now, one will store in the index of zero. Two will store in the index of one. And three will store in the index value of These are the offset values. These are the offset values. For 1, 0 is index. For 2, 1 is index. For 3, 2 is index. These are the offset values. And then, if you take any languages, C or C++ or Java, array will be a fixed size. Array will be a fixed size. If, for example, I'm going to take Java, in that I'm going to take some array, int array, equal to new of int 3. This is how I will declare in Java. If I declare the size of integer, after that, I can't able to change my array value. The array size will be fixed. The array size will be sorry. The array size will be fixed. You take any other languages. Array size is fixed. Once you assign the array size, after that you can't change the value of your array size. Array size is fixed. You can't change the value. If you take C or C++ or Java, anything, it will be a fixed one. If you take Python, the array size will be a dynamic. You can store n number of values. You can store n number of values. n number of values you can able to store. Now, you might have a question like, uh, though you are saying the dynamic, you can store your values. What's the maximum size of array in Python? What is the maximum size of an array in Python? It depends on the processor architecture. If it is a 32-bit architecture, if it is a 32-bit architecture, two to the power of because it can't be zero, that's why I removed the one. 
and then you have to minus one. If it is permit architecture, it's four bytes. Four bytes means one byte is equal to eight bits. Eight into four, thirty-two. Two to the power of thirty-one. And then what are the value getting right? That thing you have to make it minus one. That much values, that many values is the maximum value for an array for a third bit architecture. If it is sixty-four bit architecture. Per bit, what value? Two to the power of sixty-three minus one is the maximum size of array for a sixty-four bit architecture. Now, if I want to know the maximum value for my for my processor, it is a sixty-four bit or thirty-four processor, I can use one module called mean time. What I'm going to do? I'm going to create One directory, and then I'm going to make it as arrays. In the arrays, I'm going to create a Python file. In the py file, I'm going to make it as array example one. Now, I'm going to use a module. System module. That's why it's with system module. Using this module, I want to find what is the maximum size of an array. Of an array. Using print statement, I'm going to print s y s dot max six. Let's run this. This is my maximum value for my 64 bit architecture just find the value of 2 to the power of 63 and put minus 1 you will get the value as 10 kind of big values will get if it is third bit architecture you will get the third bit architecture value my process is 2 bit processor that's why i get this value if you are not asking the interview you can say The maximum size of array depends upon the architecture. If it is 30-bit architecture, 2 to the power of 30 minus 1, because the cut is zero, right? 30 minus 1. So 2-bit architecture means 2 to the power of 63 minus 1. These are the values. This is the maximum size of array you can see. If it is 30-bit architecture, it is 4 bytes. If it is 2-bit architecture, it is 8 bytes. That's it. 8 bytes equal to 4 bytes equal to sorry, uh, 8 bits. This is how you want to calculate the maximum size of an array by using the module called SWS module. If you want to see all those uh, variables as well as functions, you can click the module. You can go go and see the see what are things you can get. Where is the Anaconda is installed? What's the what, what platform are you using? What is the platform are you using? You can see you able to see all the things. KP versions, maximum size. See, this is all the variable. It's holding this much value because it, it's my own security architecture. Platform bin 32. All kind of informations will be available in the SOS module. Now, again, come back to array. I already said to you. If we want to store only similar type of elements, then you can go for array. In Python, array is dynamic. You can store up to up to maximum size. You can store the n number of values up to the maximum size. It depends on the architecture. As well as in Python, every element will having some index. based on the index you can point the location of your element you can location of your element you can find it will be stored in the continuous memory location it won't store in the random order it will be stored in the continuous number locations as well as it's very easier to calculate the position 
of each element by adding a offset to the base value. This is my base value. One is my base value. I'm adding an offset zero. Two is the base value. I'm adding an offset to one. Like this, I can add the offset values. Now I'm going to say for declaring an array, I can use a module called array module. I'm going to use now. Declaring array, I want to use a module called array module. You want to see all the functions and variables? Click on the array module. Control click. Press the control button and click the array module. You can see various. This is the array type class, and then various functions will be available. You can see the functions, right? This is a command list actually. Okay. If you scroll bottom, you can see the map and method, count, extend from file, from list, from bytes, index. You can see all the methods. Up and buffer info. Okay, you can see all the methods over here. Methods in the sense functions. Now, what I going to do? Uh, I going to rename it as refractor. I going to make it as creating an array. How to create an array? Creating an array. Refactor it. Your pi file name will change. Now, I'm going to import this module. When are you importing? In the bottom. As ARR. The very level kept as ARR. Now, I'm going to create an array. How to create an array? Just to take on variable name. I'm going to take some a equal to the reference given as for array model given as reference is arr arr dot I'm going to use this actual constructor okay c stands for constructor f stands for function v stands for variable this is actually constructor I'll say the constructor in later part because when I'm taking the whoops concept I'll say what is constructor as of now is a constructor in the constructor, you want to pass two arguments you have to pass. One is data type. Another one is value of list you have to pass. Value of list. First, you want to pass data type. What data type belongs to? The array belongs to integer data type. Integer data type. You can see all the things over here. See, right? I stands for integer. B, uh, D stands for double. Okay, you can able to see all the things. Yeah, I think they are mentioned over here. These are, yeah, double, everything you mentioned over here. As of now, I stands for integer. Now, second argument I pass value of list I want to pass. List means you have to use the square brackets. 1, comma, 2, comma, 90, comma, 89. This is how you want to create an array. Now, I go into some uh, print statement. New array, newly created array. The newly created array is I want to print the same line. What I have to use? In the argument. You can use double quotes as well as single quotes also use, you can use for strings. If you want to print the same line, I want to use the end. If I remove the end, what will happen? The print statement default equal to the new line. You go to the next line or new line can see. Going to pass. Going to pass some double quotes. And then I'm going to lose some space. And then now what I'm going to do using for loop, I want to iterate my elements, I array elements one by one based on the index portion. Based on the index portion. You can say index or you can say offset portion can pass. Now I'm going to use a for loop. For 
I will take one uh, variable as i. I am going to use range. Range is also a concept of what the range will going to do. It is going to give the sequence of integers. Sequence of integers. I can pass three arguments. The first argument I can pass start index. The start index always begins with zero. And then end index again. End index I am going to pass. One, two, three, and then four. Four means I should pass three because I am starting with zero. And then you, you might have a question. You already said to you range is going to generate a sequence of integers. Uh, you said three uh, three arguments you can pass. As of now, I have passed only two arguments. The zero start value, stop value is three. If I want to pass step value, I can pass one. Step value is step value means it will increment one by one. Zero after the one, and then two, and then three. You can pass three arguments. If you remove the one, this range for constructor what will do? It's going to increment the value one by one default. If I want to increase my step two, two times zero and then two will come. If you want to increase my step two or four times I want to decrease, you can increase step size. As of now, step is not required. And then in Python you have to follow the indentation for the colon. We have to proper the follow the proper indentation. If you take Java, you can use uh, some uh, brackets. In the brackets you can type anything. Okay, uh, Java no need to follow any indentation. As well as C also, no need to follow any, any indentation. But in Python you have to follow the indentation because in for loop we don't have any brackets. Okay, fine. Now I'm going to print those elements by passing the index. What index are going to pass? I am going to get the values from the range 0, 1, 2 and then I am going to substitute in a variable called i. This i is going to index actually. For reference, I am going to make this index. Now, in the array, I want to pass index. How can pass? A of index can pass and then I want to print the same line. What I have to use? In parameter, I can pass. In parameter, you can use single quotes or double quotes, it's up to you. I need spaces like this, you can pass. You can able to see right. One, two, 90 came. What about 89? What about 89? What the range is doing, it's giving 0, 1 and 2. Because 3 is going to stop value. 3 is going to be the stop value. What I have to give? I want to increase my stop value to 4. Then only can give 0, 1, 2, 3. See, uh, you have to make like n minus 1. n minus 1 means stop value is 4. 4 minus 1, 3. 0 to 3 will be displayed. 4 terminal not displayed. Like, like this, you have to keep the. You have to make it as n minus 1. n means. So stop value, stop value is 3, 0 to 3 will be printed. You can see 1, 2, 90, 89. Uh, 1 is first index, 2 second index, 90 is third index, 18 is the fourth index. Now, this is how you have to create your integer array. Now, what I going to do? I am going to create your double type. If you are, uh, if you are not comfortable, what you can do? You can put the type. What you can do? If I want to know the class, you can put type of A. Type of A you can put. You can get the corresponding types. What type it is? Array of array. Array of array. I think it's not giving the right one. Okay, array of array. Yeah, but I want I am expecting to wait for a minute. Yeah, I'll try here. I will copy the same thing. I'm going to do for double. Create the array for double type. Double type, what I have to use? Instead of i, 
I want to pass B. I want to pass B. I want to pass. In double, it will be like a somewhat floating value. Six ninety point seventy eight eighty nine point fifty six like this. Sorry, eighty nine what? Twelve like this. This is a double type. Double also eight bytes. Float also eight bytes actually. Okay. Now I am going to change the variable name of B and then. Capacities. This is how you want to create for your double time. Yeah, 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 hold on. B of index, right? Okay. You have to pass B of index. Yeah. As well as yeah. It's printing the element 1.23, 2.56, 90 All it's a double type. Okay, like this, you are to create for a different directions you can create. Now, next thing we're going to see how to add elements in array. How to add elements in array. See, uh, what I'm going to do. Create a new pipe file. Add elements in an array. For adding elements in array, you can use two methods. One is the insert function you can use. It's a built-in function actually. Uh, using insert function, you can insert at a specific portion. For example, I have uh, an array called 1234. If I want to insert my 90th element in the third portion, I can go for the insert function I can use. I can pass the which portion I want to insert. I can pass the portion as well. As well as I can pass the element as well. This is the use of insert to add the elements in the array. And then one more method we have, append method. Append method what we will do in that we are going to pass only one argument that going to add the element in the last. What are the elements doing the array, right? That is going to add in the last. You won't insert in the some specific portion. If you want to insert some specific portion, you have to use insert function. Now we're going to try like this. What model you use? Import array model you have to use as ARR and then uh, again create uh, ARR dot array. I'm going to create uh, one int array, this array, and then I want to pass the list I want to pass. I'm going to pass some 34, 56, 90. I'm going to pass, and then I'm going to pass 67, uh, 23, 90, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. List contains duplicate as well. List can contain duplicate, but set will, set will not contain any duplicates. Set will not contain any duplicates. Now, again, uh, again, going for a print statement. Maybe for insertion. Array before insertion, and then I want to use a print the same line. You can you in parameter, you can pass single quotes as well, double quotes also you can pass. Now, again, I'm going to use what loop range in that range. I'm going to pass a step size now. Start will be zero, stop will be. Stop will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then step value are going to pass 2 now. What is going to happen? It's going to give. It's going to give 56, 67, and 90. See, because I is passing like uh, step is 2. Now the i value will be 2 after 0. First one will be 0. If you have any doubts, you can print as it is. Print of i value. You can see now. Zero, two, and then four. 
because we given this exercise is 2. If I give 3, what will happen? If I give 3, step size, what will happen? 0 and 3 will come. 6 won't come because the stop value is 6. That's why 6 won't come. 0 to 5 values will come because I get such as 3. That's why coming 0 and 3 will come. It won't come. Now, what I do? And A of I and then I want to use equal to space and then one more parameter I'm going to use. What it is? Separator. What are you going to use? I'm going to use hash. Run the script. You can. Oh, it's not okay. Yeah, of I. Okay, 3467. Just come in. Wait a minute. No need to use a separator as of now because it's not a multiple argument. It's a single argument actually. Now I can able to get the all the elements in the array. Next thing, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the two functions. What are two functions I'm going to use? One is insert. See, uh, after putting enter, don't give the a dot insert over here. It will assume like in the print in the for loop we are using this a dot index. Just come out of the for loop a dot in the a dot insert will be there insert a function i'm going to insert on a specific position the position i want to pass is second position i want to pass second position i'm going to add 900 900 that's the use of it's a function you can pass you can insert your elements at a specific position if you want to insert in the fourth position i can give Oh. For 0 position, 1st position, 2nd position, 3rd position and 4th position, I will get the value is 900. Now again use the print statement. What you can do? Array after insertion and then use the same for loop. Can use the same for loop now this time what i'm going to use i'm going to do some slight modification in the for loop for a in in what i'm going to use in J in A yeah, going to pass. Now I'm going to print the A value now. And then end I'm going to give us end I'm going to give it now I'm print the same line actually. I miss a space. Array after insertion, you can see 34, 56, 90, 67. In the fourth portion, I inserted the 900 and then 23 and 90 is coming the last. This is how you want to add the elements in the array at the specific portion. You can change the portion as well. Now, what I can do, if I want to print in the next line, array after insertion what i can do just use one print statement in this don't pass any arguments you can see now we have one more function as well what's one more function append function 
using append function you can insert your elements at the last of your array element it won't insert in a specific position this append is going to insert only in the last that's the difference between insert and append we are going to see for the for loop adding the elements using append function see instead of range you can directly can use array it is going to give the size of your array you can call directly a it's going to give the size of array and then this j loop what is going to do right it's going to it's going to iterate the values one by one it's going to iterate the values one by one like this also can pass you can use range as well now i am going to use the append function a dot append the append you can pass only one argument what are i going to going to pass append i going to pass some 600 i going to pass it's going to add at the last I'm going to use array after insert array after insertion using append function i can see anything you can use what you can use for j in that you can call a and then print off j can call now what you can do right you can use one print statement over here to create a new line yeah because i have not given the end to put it the same line now you can see array after using append function what is happening 600 is uh, inserted at the last i want to insert in the middle or anywhere i want to go for which function insert function if i want to insert in the last i want to use the okay. append function that's the difference between insert and append now uh, i have created for only for the int array i can only for int array if you want to create for double you can use d and then you can give some double values over here the same thing you have to perform now next thing we going to see how to access an element from the array how to access an element from the array we going to see access elements from array py file the py file uh, we can use import array as err model name is array and then what i going to do right i going to access elements from array how to access elements from array i going to take the variables err array and then i going to create as of now double tag in that i want to pass some list 12.89 1.5 1.6 23.1 sorry oh my god 34.56 23.67 and then uh, 12.56 90.23 this all are double types double types if i want to access element from the array i want to access element from the array access elements 
from the array. I can do print, and I can use axis element is the axis the element is. Thank you. Yeah, off. And pass the question. Index question you can pass. I am Mr. Kama. You can pass the yeah of zero. If I pass yeah of zero, I'm going to get 12.89. If I can pass three, I can going to get the third question. Like this, you can pass an index value and get the corresponding value of your array. Double array. Okay. Next thing is, we are going to see how to remove elements from array. There are two methods are there. Before that, I am going to create one. Remove elements from array. See, uh, I am going to use two methods to remove your element from array. One is remove function I am going to use. Another one is pop function. You heard this term in care structures. Pop method. With it pop also, you can remove the element from the array. Yeah, the elements can be removed from the array using this built-in functions. Remove. But in the remove function, it will throw an error. If you are trying to remove a particular element, that element is not an array. For example, I am going to remove 23. The 23 element is not available in the array. It will throw exception it will throw an exception exception means it will throw some runtime exception through because what are the elements are going to remove that element is not only the array it's going to throw the exception as well as the again thing is the remove method removes one element at a time it will not remove all the elements it will remove one element at a time if i want to remove all the elements at time you have to use one object called iterator object. You want to iterate the elements one by one and then you have to pass into the remove. Then the remove order will do, right? The remove will remove the elements one by one at a time. So what I'm saying is, remove will uh, remove only one element. You want to remove all the elements. You want to iterate all those elements that using iterator object. That iterator object you have to pass into the remove method. Then remove will remove the, all the elements. But the basic function remove is it is going to remove one element at a time. Next thing is pop function. Pop function uh, is going to remove only the last element of array. Only the last element. For example, I have 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. If I give pop, it will remove only the last element. If I'm not passing any argument over here, pop, I'm not passing any argument. See, if I'm, if I'm using pop, I'm not passing any argument. Default, it's going to remove the last element. If I want to remove a specific element from array, I can pass position. Then it's going to remove the particular element in array. But default, what will happen? Pop, it will remove the last element. If I pass a position, it's going to remove the element from the array list okay these are the two functions available for array to remove element in array using remove method or pop method we're going to see now what i'm going to do i'm going to use import array module i'm going to import and then uh, what i'm going to do now, I am not giving any, any reference over here. I am not giving any reference over here. Directly I can call array itself. Array dot. And then array is a constructor. It might be confusing. That's why I mentioned here as 
array as arr but this time we going to try like this they are going to call array and then this array will construct are actually in that i going to uh, create one integer array and then i going to pass 1 2 3 and then 37 and then 23 45 going to pass some list of values that's why i'm saying array list actually now what i going to do i going to remove the elements before that what i do i can use for in range i can pass 0 comma the stop value is 1 2 3 4 5 6 right you can pass the stop value but it will work up to 0 to 5 print error of i and then end point because i want to print the same line by using the end here yeah you know indicate 1 2 3 6 7 23 and 45 now i going to use the pop come out of the for loop come out of the for loop and then print statement the pop sorry the pop element pop element is Print the print statement. Here are the array dot pop of two. If I'm not passing any arguments, what will happen? I'm going to remove the last element from the array. Pop of two. Now again, what I can do? Print. Just what you can do, right? Just uh, for creating a new line, you can use print statement. Double quotes you can pass. The array after popping is popping is again. What you have to do? Copy the same as it is. I remove the which element? Half question two, two, right? Zero. I remove the three actually. I remove the three. Why it's throwing array index out of range? Why it's throwing array index out of range? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why it's throwing array index out of range? Why it's throwing array index out of range? Because I popped one element, right? I popped one element. Popped means I removed one element. Now the stop I have to pass. Why? That's why it's throwing array index out of range. Now you can see. You can see here one, two, three, six, seven, twenty-three, forty-three is there. Now I can pop of two. Pop of two means second index will be three. Three will be popped. After that, after pop, I can get one, two, six, seven, twenty-three, and forty-five. Again. If you are passing more index, what will happen? It will throw array index, index error, index error in Python. You have to say array index out of range because for sixth question, there is no element at all because we have popped one element from the array list. That's why it's throwing. We are getting the array index out of range. The exception is called index error. Actually, now we want to make it as five. Now we will get the elements one, two, six, seven, twenty-three, forty-five. What's the next method? What is the next method actually? One is pop. Another one is remove. Now what I going to do? I'm going to add some comment lines. Use 
using remove going to remove the first ones we remove the first occurrence what are you going to do I'm going to take the here are dot remove i going to use remove i going to pass index is 0 we going to remove the one actually now what i can do i can go for the again for loop in range what start value zero what stop value stop value I want to pass 4 because I am going to remove the first element. I want to pass the stop value as 4. Just print statement and then uh, array of index you can pass and then parameter equal to for that what you can do right can add one print statement for creating a new line. Hmm. Array dot remove is not an array. What is happening over here? Array dot remove is not an array. Okay. Hold a minute. Array dot x is not an array. X is not an array. These effects, Wait. yeah, as well as I want to okay. See, in the remove function, you want to pass the argument starts with one. One will take the first element. By pass the two, will take the second element. Don't pass zero for remove method. Don't pass remove zero as in the remove. As well, pop also starts with one. If you want to uh, remove first element, pass one. If you want to remove second element, and pass two. Now I'm going to remove the third element actually. And the script you can see. One, two, third element three is removed. 67, 23, and 45. Like this, you can use the remove function to remove the. Oh, it's getting a. Oh, see, I passed four, right? Pass four. Remove dot x not an array. It's coming like this for the Okay, one, two, three, four. Hold a minute. Are you feeling popping? Is I'm passing three. One, two, three. Three is pop now. Okay, I get it. Sixty percent, sixty-seven, twenty-three, and forty. We're getting. Okay, fine. Now I going to remove the fourth element actually fourth element fourth element okay fourth element one two three yeah now we're getting right now we're getting one two sixty seven twenty three forty seven statement after remove oh it's throwing some exception move three 
So still throwing exception. It's not coming to this line actually. It's not coming to this line actually. It's throwing like here or array dot remove of x. The x is not an array. I'm getting some value error. I'm getting some value error. Why are you getting this value error? Hmm? Why are you getting this value error actually? Here are dot remove of three. Hold a minute. Let's see it's working or not. That's yeah, working fine. I'm going to remove the third element. throwing exception see if it is throwing some exception if you want to know in which line it's throwing exception there will be a liner will be there line number 25 will be there okay you can see in line number 25 there is an issue what it's saying right array dot remove of the x is not an array it's not an array it's saying okay now what we can do Hold the minute. I'm using the remove method. do one thing to this part I will create one more new class remove elements from array and then what I'll do right I'll copy this two more lines Yeah. Now I'm going to remove the third element. 1, 2, 67, 23. Because I have not given the stop index. Fine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? 6 means 6 minus 1. 5 I have to give the stop. It's working fine actually. Yeah, it's working fine. But I want to remove the fourth element. It's going like this. Error dot remove four. X is not an array. Hold a minute. From the first element, yeah, I can able to remove. Second element, I can able to remove. Third element. I can able to remove what about the fourth one? It's in the exception. Yes, it's not an array. Yes, it's not an array. Why it's showing like this? I'm trying to zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, hold a minute. I can add so many elements 67, 90, 96. Now, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? I'm going to use 8. Let's see. Why are I making mistakes? Line number 6, I'm making mistakes. So remove. For first argument, it's working. Second, third, working. Okay, what about the fifth one? Array dot remove of x is not an array. Hold a minute. Four. I will make the number as five. Sangeeta, what I have to do, right? If I want to remove the element, 45. I want to pass. 45, that's it. Okay, that element value. The element value you have to pass. But pop, you have to pass a position, actually. We will check with the pop as well, right? 90. If I want to remove the 90, I can use the 90 as well. 90, this means, that's why I said, it will remove one element at a time. It will remove one element at a time. If you want to iterate all the, if you want to delete all the elements from the array, you want to use the iterator object. Now we we'll check the pop as well. In pop, what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it as four. Let's see, it's throwing error or not. One, four, right? One, two, one, two, three. Yeah, one, two. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. The pop is based on the position. You can pass a position. I pass power of 4. Remove the 23. If I pass pop of uh, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. It's going to remove 67. It's going to remove the 67. The pop you have to pass the index. Like Hare, I will pass index 0, 1, 2, 3. Like same thing you have to pass like this. But in remove, what I do? You have to remove the particular variable element. No need to pass any position. Just pass the value actually. 90 means it's going to remove the 90. And it's going to remove the 96. This is how you want to delete the, remove the elements from an array. Next thing you're going to see, it's very important. How to splice an array. Because uh, most of the data analysis want to get a subset of L, uh, elements from the array, you can use slicing. I'm going for a slicing of array. Slicing of array. In slicing, you can print a specific range of elements from an array using some uh, slice operation the slice operation mostly performed by colon operator colon operator if i want to print my elements from beginning from my elements i want to begin from a, for example i have one uh, list here are equal to 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma and 78 90 67 if i want to start Start printing the element from the beginning. I can use print statement. In that, I'm going to use the variable name as ARR colon pass index value up to 90 elements. I want to print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Just pass. Four. One, two, three, seventy-eight. Because I already said n minus one, right? So we need to get ninety. What do you, what you can give? Five. Five minus one, four. And four elements. This approach only for printing the elements from beginning. Printing the elements. Um, 
beginning. Now, I want to print the element from last. What I, what, I, what you can do? I want to print my element from last. Array. Put the array brackets in that I'm going to pass minus three. I want to print my elements from the last. Six will come. It's a minus one actually. Minus one. It's minus two. Minus three won't print like this. Okay, because I already said the minus one, right? Sixty-seven and ninety will be printed. Why it's not printing like this? One, two, three, seventy-eight, ninety is printed. Why it's printing? One, two, three. I passed minus only, right? Hold a minute. Okay, let's start with minus one, minus two, minus three. Okay. It's printing like this. Minus one, minus two, minus three. Okay, 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 okay. I understood. Got it. The one portion is one. Two is portion number two. Three is portion number three. Seventy is portion of four. Ninety is portion of four. Sixty-seven is portion number zero. One, two, three, four, and sixty-seven is portion is five. Now, I given minus three. If I given minus three, what will happen? I already said to you, if I want to print the elements from the beginning, in the in the starting, you should not give anything. You should give blank as it is, colon of minus three. Now. I go into assign some values for this. See, minus one for ninety, minus two, seventy-eight, minus three. I go into print from zero to minus three. What values will come? Zero to minus three. One, two, three will come. Actually, it won't print in the reverse order. If I give minus three, what will happen? It's going to print from the beginning only. Actually. Zero, sorry, a one, two, three will print because minus three will be seventy. You won't print actually. This is how you have to do the slicing. Sorry, I want to remove this. Thing. If I want to print up to ninety, what I have to change? If I want to print ninety from starting onwards, what I can do? Want to print? If we want to print from starting onwards, starting to 90, okay. you can pass minus one because uh, see the starting I'm not giving anything. Okay. Yeah, no, not like that. Uh, in the starting I'm not giving anything. I'm giving a blank. It starts in the left. It's going to print all the elements. The 67 index is reverse index minus one. It's going to print one, two, three, seventy up to ninety. Wait a minute. This conference will now be recorded. If I want to print up to seventy from starting to seventy, what I can pass? Colon four. Minus four, right? Which is one of this? Reverse index it is. Minus one. Sorry. This one is minus one. And it minus two. Minus three. Seventy-eight is minus three. But I want to make it as minus four because n minus one, right? I'll get minus three. It's getting minus four, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Okay, minus one, minus two, minus three, and minus four. Okay. Minus two. Minus two. I had to pass. 
right? Yeah, I have to pass the minus 2. See, uh, negative index also you can pass as well as past index also you can pass. Past also you can pass because in the starting position, I give it, I give it as blank. I give it as blank. If, you, if I give it blank, it will take from the starting values. Now, if I want to get 90, what I can pass? In the past value. 1, 2, 3, uh, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. I can pass 5 itself. Yeah, you can see the output. 1, 2, 3, 790. Nugget index also, you can able to pass. And then, the slicing, we are going to see yeah, we are going to see how to print the elements just to the print statement in this you can pass array now, I am going to pass the index position, starting index position. I am going to pass starting index position. Starting index position, I am going to pass 3. From 3, it is going to display all the values. The end index, I have not recorded anything. The end index is infinite. What are the values available? It is going to print. It is going to print 78. 90 and 37. Now we're going to start index. The ending index is infinite. Infinite in the sense, what are the values in the array? It's the it's going to print everything. Okay. Now, now I'm going to use the print statement. I'm going to pass array value as minus 3. Start index is minus 3. End index I given as blank. What are the values will be printed? What are the values will be printed? You have to answer. Yeah, it's print like uh, 67, 90, 78. Let's see. 78, 90, and 67. 67. Hold on. So, yeah, yeah. 78, 90, and 67 is printed. Like this, you can. For example, I want to um, get a range of values. For getting a range of values, what you can do, you can pass the Start index and end index you can pass. The start index are going to pass 2. Index are going to pass 4. How many elements you get? How many elements you get? 0, 1. Third element you will get. 78 element you will get. Let's see. 3, 78. To get a list, get a range of values. Range of values in the sense, see, uh, 1 is 0, 2 is 1, 3 will be 2, 7 will be 4. Okay, fourth values won't be displayed. Stop value 4 only because you're giving n minus 1. This is the yeah, out to values. Next thing is, I'm going to give array. colon colon minus one i have not provided start index i have not provided the i have not provided end index anything i have not provided if i use double colon what will happen it's going to print in the reverse it's going to print in the reverse reverse means you understood right 67 90 
78321. You can see the list. 67, 90, 78, 3, okay. 2, and 1. I don't put any start index and end index. I want to print in the reverse order. That's why I have given minus 1 over here. Okay. What will happen, right? It's going to print in the reverse order. It's going to iterate. 67, minus 1. It's also minus 1. It's also minus 1. It's going to iterate the sequence 1 by 1. Everything is going to assemble like a minus 1. It's going to print in the reverse order. This is a way to slice the elements in array. If we, if I'm not providing any start index, it will take this one as zero from here. What are the in portion is given, and then it will go into the elements. If I give minus two, the start index are given zero. If I'm not giving anything, means it will have zero. 0 to minus 2 going to give the elements. Now, second thing is I can start an index, but the index is somewhat not doing anything blank. From third portion to it's going to give all the elements. Like this, you can perform the slicing. Hold a minute. The last thing we're going to see how to search element in array. How to search element in array. How to search element in array. Search element in array. Like you want to import the array module. And then uh, I'm going to keep brr equal to array module name. And then constructor I'm going to use is array. I'm going to create one uh, integer. And then I want to pass some list values. In the list you can have duplicates as well. And then uh, already we know right you can uh, print some meaningful messages the new created array is the newly created array new created array new created array is yeah and then you can uh, write in for loop and print those values 0 to what's the uh, actual you can pass like this also len of array you want to find the length of array what you can do and pass len of array you find the length actually what's the actual length array? actually 1 2 3 4 5 the len, len of array if you pass means it's going to give 5 now what i'm going to do i'm going to print the elements the elements and then I want to print the same line okay yeah now yeah you can use a space over here yeah 190 70 90 and 78 now I'm going to search elementary the concept is to search an element. Sorry, search an element. Element. Sorry, element in your array. Now, to search an element array, you can use a method called index method. Using index, can can able to search the element. Now I go into some print statement and then this print for creating a new line. This print statement the index of first occurrence is 
is I'm going to use index method arr dot index index are going to pass 78 I want to know the index 78 index I want to know right just run as it is okay. the index of first occurrence is 2, two because 2 times I given 78 2 times I given 78 okay it won't see the last index okay like this is 0 1 and then 2 index of 78 is 2 and then you want to pass for uh, 90 what's the index one like this you can search elements in the array search means uh, it's available which index you can find the last one you're going to see how to update element in array how to update element array what i'm going to do right i'm going to use a copy the script how to update an element in array Update element in an array. Just copy as it is. Just change update element in array. For updating, you are going to reassign the value. For 90, I am going to make it as 95. I am going to reassign to the existing value. That is called update. In order to update an element in array, we simply assign a new value to some desired index we want to update. Which index we want to update, we will uh, pass index. That's it. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to remove all these things. And then, I'm going to pass, I'm going to pass array of 2. What is array of 2? 78, right? For 78, I'm going to make it as 96. Instead of 78, I'm going to make it as 96 because I'm going to portion as 2. 0, 1, 2. Okay, fine. Now, just print some statement. Print after up, array after updating. Array after updating. Use on end separator. And then just normal as it is. Right? You can use some for loop. I'm going to use some i in range. And then I'm going to pass 0, comma len of array, length of array. The length of array will maximum will be, it's going to give 5. And then print statement array of i going to pass and then want to the same line that we are using the end yeah i missed one thing just add one print statement to create your new line Let's see whether it's updated or not. These are the new created array. In second it's portion, updated. it's got updated to 96. See, uh, array, these are the very basics. There are n number of methods are available. If I want to go to the next level of OOPS concept, at the time, I'll use this array as well as this for kind of for loops. This kind of loops will available. I will apply on those inheritance. At the time, you should know. That's why I'm taking all these basics to you. Tomorrow, we're going to see strings. As of now, at closing session.